Hello and welcome to the April 2015 edition of Made in Lincoln UK. This is a social interactive documentary magazine program reflecting and promoting Lincoln District life and events. On this edition, I begin with a look around Lincoln's historical buildings and places. Whenever we find ourselves walking down Motherby Hill, one may not be aware of the fact that you're walking on what was the western wall of the Roman colony, which stretched down to the Brayford Pool. And the footings of the Lincoln Colonial Westgate can still be seen today behind Lincoln City Hall. Walking up to the top of the High Street, on our right are some carefully restored 15th century buildings. The centre one is two-storied and is called Durnstall House, whilst the larger three-storied neighbour is known as the Cardinal's Hat, no doubt in compliment to Thomas Wolseley, who was Bishop of Lincoln in 1514 and became Cardinal in 1515. It appears to have been an inn in 1521, for which William Baker paid an annual rental of 28 shillings and 6 pence, equivalent to £1.42 by today's reckoning. In 1801 it ceased to be an inn. After this these houses were rented out, just off the main high street. The tower at St Benedict's is Anglo-Saxon and was already here when the Normans arrived. The Church of St Benedict, perhaps the quaintest and most interesting one in the city, it took quite a severe battering during the Civil War which was probably the cause of the destruction of the original nave and tower. Later, these materials were reused in the reconstruction of the chancel and tower, perhaps with more enthusiasm than accuracy and artistic merit. Sadly, St. Benedict is but a shadow of its former self, of its former 12th century size and glory. Wigford, in the Scandinavian days, was a separate community outside the boundaries of the city. Have a look now at the splendid Tower of St Mary's. It is Saxon in period and has a Roman tombstone let into the wall of the tower a few feet above and to the right of the doorway. It commemorates the name of Satia, a Gaelic citizen, also that his wife, Cassonia, and their sons, Quintus. It is by way of being a dedication stone and also bears a Saxon inscription in its gable recording the name of Ethic, who provided the money for the building of the church. Wigford was indeed a very wealthy suburb. On the same site of St Mary Lee Wigford's church is a St Mary's Conduit. It dates from the 16th century and supplied water to this part of the town from a hillside spring to the east of the city. It is believed to have been built from fragments of stone from the demolished house of the White Friars, which stood a short distance away on the other side of the street. We move on again to take a look at a fine late 16th century timbered building about 17 yards down on our side of the street. Sadly it lies semi-obscurity down a narrow passageway at the rear of 333 High Street. This passage is an old right of way which leads out onto what is now the Tenscroft Street car park. St Mary's Guildhall probably started as a meeting place for trade or religious guilds. Wigford the suburb in which they stood contains some of the Lincoln's richest and most influential citizens and no doubt the building and the position of these halls owed much to them. And just across the road, clinging to a wall, is a stone that most people would walk past and not notice, but is in fact the remains of a Roman milestone situated on the Roman Ermine Street to London. I move on now to the river, yet two more black and white timber framed buildings. In fact, in the days of which we speak, you would have encountered many such houses hereabouts. For these were the houses for the wealthy wool merchants. These two buildings have been extensively and lovingly restored. The other with the four gables and double overhang is the earliest in date of the restored timber framed houses. It's called the Green Dragon and dates back to the 14th century. The bridge itself is a point of intersection of Ermine Street and the river Witham, which began life in Roman times as a mere ford. They later bridged it to meet the demands of wheeled traffic. Take a look at the ribs of the Norman vaulted arch underneath the bridge. 
These were constructed in 1167. The opposite side of the bridge to the timbered building was once stood a small wayside chapel dedicated to St. Thomas of Canterbury. It was built in the 13th century and demolished in 1763. In its place was erected a large stone obelisk. This in turn was removed in 1939. Hi, I'm Paul Phoebe, owner of In-House Design. We're a family-run business based in Lincoln. We offer a bespoke service on all of our products which gives discerning clients the inspiration, freedom and ability to create a kitchen or bathroom that fits their dreams. And a full comprehensive design service and fitting of the highest quality. Please pop in for a chat at our showroom on Burton Road, Lincoln or alternatively visit our website to arrange an appointment and we'll take it from there. We hope to see you soon. Hello, I'm, I'm Julia Law and this is Samskora Gallery and this is um, my first solo exhibition. Um, oil paintings, all of them. I make my own canvases. I was trained at university. I'm very up and down. An artist's life is not an easy one. Um, I have sold a few um, and over the past couple of years you know, quite a few, it's, it's getting better. Um, I'm hoping that this exhibition will give me a bit more exposure locally. So um, I'm hoping that sales will increase and definitely there has been a lot of interest from people who have visited the gallery, which is really encouraging. So yeah, I'm really pleased. Okay, so this is um, a piece that was commissioned um, for a wedding present actually, for the young couple that are sitting in the foreground. Um, this was a very special place to them um, it, and they visited it last summer, uh, somewhere in Sweden, I don't even know exactly where, but um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really pleased with it so far. Yeah, um, this is called Looking Back um, and it's North Yorkshire coastline, uh, looking back at Ravenscar on a particularly dull and cloudy February day and the sky opened up. Um, and it was just quite stunning, so yeah, that was the inspiration for it. It's actually the coastline where I was born as well, so um, quite a meaningful piece for me. Okay, so um, this is a view from Burkhead um, on the Scottish coastline, actually the Morrisshire coastline, um, and it was particularly beautiful early evening um, in February. The light was stunning, so um, that was the inspiration for this piece. Okay, so this, this one is um, called Fairy Pools um, and was inspired following a, a walk on the island of Skye, which is absolutely stunning. Um, but clearly it was an autumn day um, and the heather had all turned kind of this golden brown. And the weather changed from sort of when we set off to when we finished, so it was um, quite an intriguing day too. Beautiful. And um, this one is um, my son and his dog walking on the beach in Lossiemouth. So uh, all you RAF people will hopefully recognise the hills in the background and the lighthouse. Um, particularly stunning skies, obviously in Scotland. It's just an amazing place. And this one was inspired by um, early morning um, trip to Loch Linney, actually, and it's just looking down the loch, the colours in the sky, uh, again, quite remarkable, um, beautiful, beautiful scenery. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm quite impressed by Scotland. <laughs> oh, this one was just inspired by the amazing colours of the leaves in autumn, looking up at the sky when it was particularly blue. Um, I walk my dog most days and um, I always love autumn, so this really was just a, a tribute to autumn. This is um, the view from my studio window actually, um, and I actually paint in my spare room. Um, 
and I was particularly intrigued this last autumn because the colours were so beautiful, um, particularly er particularly in the early summer, uh, autumn. So yeah, that's where this one came from. This is Anna, um, and she is the daughter of a very good friend and colleague, um, and she calls herself Chin Spanglish because her mum is Chinese, her dad is Spanish, and she's English. And it was that that inspired me to paint her, actually, and I, this is the first of three portraits, two on the way, two more on the way. Um, delightful child, too. She's just gorgeous. <laughs> so I was shopping in Bath after lunch and a glass of wine or two, and there was this busker playing in the square and I went over to him and asked him if I could take some photographs so I could paint his portrait and he agreed so that's where this came from. It was a beautiful day. <laughs> and this gentleman was playing the sax in um, a square in Barcelona and I just took photographs of him and a few of his buddies actually and this is the result of that. Beautiful music. Um, so the ratatouille um, was inspired by my love of cooking really and I do like to make ratatouille, it's quick and easy. So I just was chopping away one day and thought oh, I know what I can do, I can paint these. So that's exactly what I did. Cooling sewing machines stock a large range of sewing machines from £95 to the latest computerised embroidery machines with software which allows you to design your own logos or motifs. Cooling sewing machines also offer free tuition on all their machines and provide a full range of haberdashery. On top of this, they provide an authorised repair service with a wide range of spare parts and accessories. With over 60 machines and overlockers in stock and with all the big names all under one roof, why go elsewhere? Cooling sewing machines, 53 High Street, Lincoln. Hi, I'm Claire from Sunbeam Events. Um, we're here today running one of our regular craft fairs. Um, we do two sorts of craft fairs, Handmade with Love, which is where we do demonstrations, and like today, where we do crafting gift, which allows small traders to come in as well. Um, we do two here a month, every month, all year round. Um, we also do specialist fairs. We have a um, Little Beans Baby and Toddler Show next month, and we have the Spirit of Linden Pagan Festival next month as well. Um, we have a lot of fantastic storeholders that come to our events. A lot of it is handmade and is beautifully unique. Um, we range from all different kinds of things to from cards, jewellery. We have wood turners that come to see us, um, sewn items, all manner of things, and they're all wonderful and I uh, love doing my fairs for them.
Well, there we go. That wraps it up for this edition of Made in Lincoln UK. Remember, this is your video platform. So if you know of any topics or issues that you would think would be of interest to the people throughout the Lincoln District, then get in touch with me and I'll put it in the big picture. <laughs>